affected his heart, he shared the gospel with them daily in the marketplace and in the synagogue. Why was he motivated for missions? Because of a cause. Folks, just open up your eyes. Is there not a cause? Well, now, absolutely, as I open up my eyes to Brazil, I see a cause. We don't even go to Brazil to see a cause. America needs laborers in the churches and the devout men and women who are sold out to Christ and open up their spiritual eyes and see that the, the, the answer is not a better uh, a president. The answer is not a better, better political uh, system or a, a, a new educational system or better health care. The answer is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is a cause. And that ought to motivate us. You know, um, the mission board that I met with is perhaps one of the, uh, or the largest in the Baptist mission board in Brazil. We have 26 families, active families in Brazil. That might sound like a lot, but for, for a country that has 5,517 cities, that's nothing. 17 cities in Brazil have a population of over 1 million. Just the city of São Paulo alone has a population of over 20 million. You could send 1,000 missionaries there and I need to the service. In the Amazon jungle, which covers one third of Brazil, and I've never been there because Brazil is so large, it's larger than the contiguous United States. But the jungle that covers one third of Brazil, in that jungle there's over 200 Indian tribes. The Brazilian government estimates that there's 78 Indian tribes that have no contact with civilization. Mm -hmm. Is there not a cause? There are 26 active families in Brazil, but of those 26 families, Seven of them are from my dad's generation. They're 60 years of age or old. My dad is 78 years of age. With all across the world, with our mission board, there's 500 families, and the average age of the missionaries is 58 years of age. Mm -hmm. So seven of the 26 are from my dad's generation. 14 of us are second or third generation missionaries. We were born in, we were grew up in Brazil. And only five have gone to Brazil from the states in the last 40 years and are still there, but really only three because two of those five are on vacation in this world. And I think, where are the missions? Mm -hmm. Where are the labors? Well, we're just too preoccupied with entertainment and with taking care of our family and with comfort and with paying our bills and with having a retirement and all these things are fine and dandy. But folks, is there not a cause? This life is passing by. We have but one life to give to Christ and then we have all of eternity to live with Him with the souls that we have taken with us. There is a cause and we need to open our spiritual eyes and not be preoccupied with the things of this world but be preoccupied with the things of God. Why was Paul a missionary? What motivated him? Because of a cause. Firstly, he was motivated by a Christ. Secondly, he was motivated um, by a calling. Thirdly, he was motivated by a cause. And lastly, let's open back to our text, 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I'm finishing. Verse 8. He was motivated by a crown. By a crown. Bible says, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love is a period. Now, I'm all for investments and in trying to take care of your family and trying to be good stewards of what God has given you and having a retirement plan or, you know, Investing in the stock, whatever it may be. You know, perhaps a good investment nowadays, you know, rent you 12, 13, 14% a year. And that might sound like a lot, but you know what? There is no better investment than investing in yeah. Laying up treasure in heaven. Cool. Because you can save up a billion dollars, but when you die, it's all going to stay here. But whatever you take with you to eternity, that's for you. You know what? You, I, I can't think of a better way to invest in eternity than the souls of men. Living your life with Christ. Why did why did why was Paul saw Paul able to go through all the persecution? Why was he able to do without that? He obviously he really meant it when he says, For me to die is Christ. To him, Christ was everything. 
But his eyes weren't fixated on the things of this world. He was investing in eternity. Right. He wanted to hear those words of his Savior, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And that is what I want to hear of my Savior. I am nothing. I am a sinner. I deserve hell. But Jesus Christ died for me and he saved me. And what can I do but give my life back to him? And by the way, when I live for him, he promises me blessings. Not just in this life, but he promises me eternal blessings in heaven. Yeah. Wow, what a privilege and an honor. I get the best of both worlds. Yes, sir. It doesn't mean that I'm not persecuted. It doesn't mean that I don't go through trials and tribulations. But it does mean that I have peace and joy and commitment in this life. Amen. 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 And I get to have a crown in heaven. Mm -hmm. That I will lay down to you, Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know what? Let's live our life for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, what are you doing for the Great Commission? For the mission? That's good. That's good. Are you involved? Are you actively going and telling others about Christ? Are you so conscious? How much are you doing to help reach the loss of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are you giving so that others can go where you can't be? Well, how much time do you spend praying? Praying for the lost, praying for labels, praying for revival. How much time are you committed to doing what God would have to do. Those are the four motivations.